Hi everyone and welcome to Moments in Medicine Live, a weekly chat which is hosted right here on Nebraska Medicine's Facebook page every Wednesday at noon. Joining us today is Dr. Abby Fingeret and here at Nebraska Medicine. Thanks for joining us, Abby. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure to be here today to talk to you about thyroid cancer. That's right. And before we get started, we do just want to remind our viewers the information contained in this live chat is to be utilized for informational purposes only. For specific questions regarding your medical condition or treatment plan, please consult with your doctor directly. So Dr. Fingeret, September marks Thyroid Cancer Awareness Month. Um, first up, what is a thyroid nodule? That's an excellent question. I'd actually like to take even one step further back and talk about what is the thyroid. Um, because there may be some uh, viewers who are not familiar with the thyroid gland. So the thyroid gland is an endocrine gland that um, lives in the neck. It sits in two sides, the right and left side, and has a bridge between those two sides called the isthmus, or the center portion of the thyroid. Um, and this gland makes thyroid hormone, which is the body's hormone of metabolism and controls the major functions of every cellular system in the body. Um, and this gland goes on and does its job from the time we're born until the time we die in most people without any problems. Um, but in some people, you can develop a thyroid nodule. So a thyroid nodule is a lump on the thyroid or within the thyroid that is different from the rest of the surrounding thyroid tissue um, but is comprised of thyroid tissue. So it's an abnormal spot within the thyroid um, that in most cases is not a cancer, which is great news okay. because thyroid nodules are actually very common. Um, by um, the time of middle age, about half of women will have a thyroid nodule and about a third of men. So thyroid nodules are incredibly common. Um, most of the time, thyroid nodules have no impact on the function of the thyroid. So just having a lump or a spot on the thyroid does not necessarily mean that the thyroid function or the job of the metabolism of the thyroid is impacted. It's just the structure or the way the thyroid appears um, on imaging or sometimes even when you can see or feel a lump. So how would I know that I have a thyroid nodule? Excellent question. The vast majority of thyroid nodules, we actually pick up on images for other reasons. So okay. if you have a CAT scan because you had a car accident, we can see a thyroid nodule. If you have an ultrasound to look at the blood flow in the carotid arteries, we can see a thyroid nodule. Some thyroid nodules can become symptomatic. Um, and so if they grow, because of their location near the windpipe and the esophagus, they can cause throat irritation um, with frequent throat clearing <coughs> <coughs> uh, or a constant coughing. They can cause a change in swallowing habits. It can be difficulty swallowing, the sensation that you have a lump stuck in your throat, or having to swallow hard or swallow twice, especially with um, thicker kind of solid foods or pills. Um, but almost always thyroid nodules have no symptoms at all and we pick them up based on images that you have for other reasons. If I do have one of these, I mean, what should I do? What, what are the next steps once I'm diagnosed with one? So the most important thing is to talk to your doctor. Um, if you suspect you have a thyroid nodule or um, you have a report from another image that shows a thyroid nodule, the first step is going to be the assessment of your thyroid function. Like we talked about, the structure of the thyroid or the appearance of the thyroid and the function are typically not related. Um, but sometimes they can be. So finding out with a simple blood test whether or not the thyroid gland is under-functioning, over-functioning, or has normal function would be the next step. Okay. Um, and then to determine whether or not a nodule is a thyroid cancer, yeah. sometimes a biopsy is necessary. Okay. Um, there are very um, certain specific criteria that we use to determine based on what the thyroid looks like by ultrasound what the nodule looks like by ultrasound, whether or not a biopsy is necessary. Okay. Um, I mean, how common is it for one of these two um, to be cancerous? And also, who is most at risk for getting thyroid cancer? Luckily, thyroid nodules, though they are very, very common, um, thyroid cancer is much less common. So of all thyroid nodules, only about 5 to 10% of them will have a cancer. Okay. Um, which means that 90 to 95% of thyroid nodules are completely benign and do not um, need uh, to be removed because of concern for cancer. The uh, main risk factor for thyroid cancer is 
sorry, Jenny, unfortunately, being a woman. <laughs> Great. Uh, we don't know why, but women <laughs> have four to five times more um, diagnoses of thyroid cancer than men do. Um, certainly, like other cancers common in women, there are probably other hormonal factors at play that we don't understand yet. Um, but being a woman is the largest risk factor for thyroid cancer. One of the really unique things about thyroid cancer is that it tends to affect younger people. We think about cancer as a mm. disease of older people that you get as you get older, but thyroid cancer can occur even in teenagers, um, can occur in people in their 20s and 30s and 40s, um, and can occur really at, at all um, points of the life spectrum, but it's very common to see thyroid cancer in people in their 30s and 40s. So if a person is diagnosed um, with thyroid cancer, what are some treatment options for them? The primary treatment option for thyroid cancer is a surgery um, to remove either that portion of the thyroid or the entire thyroid gland. The extent of surgery... <laughs> The only difference is that it adds a little bit of time to the operation because I have to make the tunnel under the arm to get to the thyroid. So um, people who are candidates for this approach to thyroid surgery um, are people who are um, otherwise fairly healthy, who are not smokers, um, and who do not have evidence of um, extension or growth of their thyroid cancer outside of their thyroid gland. Is thyroid cancer curable? 
That's a great question. So mm -hmm. cancer doctors are always very hesitant to use the word cure. Um, one of the um, elements of thyroid cancer is that it has an excellent prognosis. Mm -hmm. So what we tell people is that your thyroid cancer, in most cases, can be completely treated with just surgery. Okay. Um, there are people who require additional therapy for thyroid cancer. That additional therapy is typically in the form of a radioactive iodine treatment. So uh, traditional radiation is a beam of radiation that's focused on a specific area and targets that area. We um, don't use that type of radiation for thyroid cancer. We use radioactive iodine, which is actually a pill that you swallow um, that hides radiation inside iodine. The way that your thyroid gland makes thyroid hormone is by um, using iodine. So the thyroid is the only part of the body that uses iodine. Uh, think about it kind of like a Trojan horse. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you're familiar with the concept. We hide the radiation inside the iodine, and so it goes only to thyroid cells, and thyroid, regular thyroid or thyroid cancer uses iodine. Um, and so that is typically a one-time treatment that happens about six to 12 weeks after surgery for people that have high-risk thyroid cancer or some people that have intermediate-risk thyroid cancer, which overall is about 10 to 15% of people with thyroid cancer. Um, and then um, they are followed. So okay. most people with thyroid cancer will have no evidence of disease following surgery. And we know that based on serial or um, monitoring ultrasounds. So we look with ultrasound and we can also look with a blood test, a tumor marker um, for people that have had their entire thyroid gland removed. Um, I use the term no evidence of disease rather okay. than cure because I like to emphasize to people that I treat with thyroid cancer um, that this is a lifelong disease. You may not have active thyroid cancer, but it always requires surveillance. And I worry when I use the word cure that people won't come back to get mm. their ultrasound and won't come back to get their blood tests. And um, it is possible, though it's very unlikely, it is possible for people with thyroid cancer to have return or spread of their disease even 30 years after they've had no evidence of wow. disease. So this is something that does need to be followed for life. Um, but most people do very well. Almost all thyroid cancers at the time of diagnosis are contained within the thyroid or just within the lymph nodes. Um, around the area of the thyroid. It's quite rare for thyroid cancer to go to other places or metastasize in the body. Okay, um, we do want to remind our viewers, if you guys have a question, you can feel free to submit it on our Facebook page. Um, Dr. Fingera, I'm sure that it's not just you here at Nebraska Medicine. I'm sure there's a, there's a large team. So why should someone choose Nebraska Medicine for their care when it comes to their thyroid? We do have a large team. Um, we have a multidisciplinary group of care providers. That includes uh, endocrinologists and surgeons, as well as dedicated uh, nurses who are familiar with the care and treatment of thyroid cancer. And for cases that um, require um, additional radiation therapy uh, or um, medical oncology therapy, we have those providers as well. Um, the uh, main reason that I think that people enjoy their experience here at Nebraska Medicine is that we try and streamline the approach as much as possible. Um, if, especially for people who are traveling from far away, um, we coordinate the visit with the surgeon, with the endocrinologist on the same day so that it is not repeated office visits. If a thyroid nodule is discovered, um, then we can perform biopsy same day. Um, myself and my endocrinology colleagues, um, Dr. Whitney Goldner and Dr. Aneri Patel, um, also perform um, biopsies same day. So it avoids having to see a doctor to get a diagnosis and then be sent to another doctor for a biopsy and then go back to the first doctor for your biopsy results. Yeah. Um, we, we understand that um, this is a big deal um, but that people also have lives to live. And, mm -hmm. and so we try and minimize the amount of time that is spent coming unnecessarily for repeated visits when we can provide all of those things in one. Um, I think that our um, many excellent 
providers, our expertise in this area, um, are one of the reasons why people have such a good experience here. And uh, most of all, we, we really enjoy taking care of people and providing them with the um, all of the options and all of the information that they need to make their own treatment decisions. Okay. Um, we do have um, a couple questions on Facebook, and if you mm -hmm. guys have one, feel free to submit it down there. Um, first question, um, are nodules and is it goiters? Yes. Are they the same thing? Great question. So goiter is a term that just means overgrown thyroid or enlarged thyroid gland. Um, some of the most classic description of, of goiter we see in um, places like um, third world countries where nutrition is very poor. Um, if you lack iodine in your diet, then you can grow to have a very large goiter. Um, luckily, in the United States, we do not have that problem because we have iodine in our table salt. Mm. And so it's extremely rare to have iodine deficiency here in the United States, but we still have goiter. And we have some people with goiter for reasons that we don't know um, and don't understand and can't explain. Goiters can come in two varieties. They can come with nodules or without nodules. So it is possible to have nodules within a goiter. Um, and it's possible to have a goiter that does not have nodules in it. Um, the uh, distinction um, might not always be conveyed. Someone may be told that they have a goiter and not realize that they have a goiter with nodules. So it's important to ask that question um, because nodules within a goiter can also harbor a thyroid cancer and need to be followed just like any other thyroid nodule. Okay. Um, Roberta says that she's a 14-year thyroid cancer survivor, so go Roberta, congrats. Congratulations. Um, she says that she's glad to see awareness being published um, like this. What's, what's the one thing that you really want people to take away? Because September is Thyroid Cancer Awareness Month, what's, what's the one piece of advice that you really want people to take away? Um, so I think that uh, empowering yourself and being your own advocate, if you are someone with a thyroid nodule or you have concern that you have a thyroid cancer is extremely important. Um, there is abundant evidence that care providers who have expertise in thyroid cancer do a better job than people who do not treat this disease on a regular basis, um, both in terms of the workup before, the evaluation beforehand, um, and the surgery itself. Thyroid surgery is, in most cases, extremely safe, but there are some lifelong consequences if there are complications with surgery. The most common being a change to the voice. So um, the nerves that control the function of the vocal cords are right behind the thyroid gland and can be injured or damaged as a result of that operation. The more times a year a surgeon does this operation, the lower likelihood that they're going to have a voice issue after surgery. Um, similarly, there are four small glands that sit right around the thyroid gland called parathyroid glands. And these regulate calcium levels in the body they can be injured or damaged as a result of thyroid surgery. And again, the more thyroid surgery someone does per year, the less likely they are to have this complication. But if all four of the parathyroid glands are injured or damaged, it can require taking calcium supplements and additional medication to help you absorb calcium up to five times per day, um, which really has a huge impact on someone's quality of life if they have this diagnosis as a person in their 30s and they're going to live mm -hmm. for 50 or 60 years. Um, and so I think that one of the most important things that we can do as experts is to spread the word and make sure people realize that um, it's okay to ask questions. It's okay to ask your doctor, how often do you do this operation? How many of these do you do per year? What is your complication rate? And if you have a doctor that's not um, willing or comfortable to give you the answer to that, um, seek a second opinion because these are life changing um, decisions and it's always worth um, making sure that you're comfortable with the with the decision that you're making and the surgeon that you have. Great advice. Um, Dr. Vingra, is there anything else that you would like to add today? Um, I think that the uh, vast majority of people with thyroid nodules need to be relieved and reassured that they're not cancer. But the most important thing you can do is speak with your doctor and if you need to or referred to an expert to find out for sure. Um, the, the ball's in your court uh, to, to seek out the expert opinion and advice. Uh, and again, be your own advocate uh, yeah. because no one's going to do it for you. Uh, so 
ask the questions even if it makes you uncomfortable and bring a family member with you or a friend with you for support during these times. Um, and if you are someone who isn't necessarily comfortable asking those types of questions, uh, have your family or friend ask for you. Perfect. Um, well, thank you so much to Dr. Fingerette for joining us today. And if you guys would like to schedule an appointment, you can call 1-800-922-0000. Of course, more information is always available on our website, nebraskamed.com. And we will see everyone um, next Wednesday at noon for our next